Hi everyone, this is Sylvia. Um, this is my very first video. Um, I recently made a lot of purchases when it comes to books. I love to read. Um, and I was on YouTube. Oh, come on, Handle, sit down. Uh, and I was watching a YouTube reviewer, and she was talking about a website called Book Outlet. So, of course, I had to go check it out. I am addicted to this website. Um, there's new and there's used. Um, and then there's copies that, I guess, school libraries or public libraries don't need anymore. And so they're called the uh, Dent and Scratch. Basically, they're going to have little problems like this or just little things like that. Book um, dog-eared pages, maybe. And that's the only thing wrong with them. And I'm getting them for like a dollar, two, three dollars max. So, like, this is Bitten. It's originally $9.99. I paid maybe a dollar, two dollars. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys if Handles wants to agree with me. He was just asleep. And now he has decided that the camera is rolling so he needs to be awake and the center of my attention anyways cat butt um anyways uh since i've got it in my hand we'll go ahead and start with this one um again it's bitten i do believe it is two books in one because it says bitten dangerous girls and the taste of night it is by rl stein um, and the back is, you'll love them to death. Twin sisters Destiny and Livy Weller return home from summer vacation with a dark secret and an inhumane desire to drink blood. Or maybe that's, I'm sorry, inhuman desire to drink blood. What they have, what have they become? Can they ever turn back? As their deadly secret becomes harder to keep, more questions arise and loyalties are tested. And as one sister descends into darkness, the other must find a way to save her and herself. Who will live to see the glow of the night next full moon? Which sister will survive? In Dangerous Girls and Dangerous Girls Number 2, The Taste of Night, published together in Bitten, best-selling author R.L. Steins explores the dark creatures of the night. Um, I'm kind of a vampire freak, um, but not so much the adult version. Um, more the young adult set. I don't know, just certain adult novels I can't get into. Um, so, okay, Handles, you gotta go down now. So, most of these are going to be young adult novels. Um, some of them I've read, maybe I've read something in the series and I liked it and I just want to keep reading. Um, but, like I said, most of them are going to be young adults. Some are, uh, adult. And I'll be sure to let you know. Um, this one is part of the House of Night series. I started reading the House of Night series when it started getting cliche to me or like they were just beating a dead horse till it was down um, that's when I stopped basically they had just brought back some archangel or whatever the crow people had just been brought back go on handles sorry he wants out um, I, I was done so I haven't read any more since then but um, around that time, these that was when the novellas started coming out, and they had this one on there for like a sixty nine cents a dollar. Which they're great writers. It's another daughter duo, so I mean they're great writers. Don't get me wrong. It's just a lot of young adult novels can get cliche. But this is the White City, eighteen ninety three, in turn of the century Chicago. With the World's Fair bringing bustle and excitement to her home city, 16-year-old Emily Wheeler should be reveling in her youth, youthful beauty and the excitement around her. But her whole life changed when her mother died, leaving her to be the lady of Wheeler House. Her father, a powerful bank president, is at the center of an important social hub for the booming young city, and he needs Emily to do everything her mother would have done, to be a good hostess and make sure the mansion runs smoothly. As Emily uneasily tries to replace her mother, she longs for, she also longs for more, for love and a life of her own. 
When a handsome young man notices her at one of her father's parties, it seems that her hopes may finally be coming true. Until her father forbids her to see him, or any other man, and starts to reveal a darkly violent side that even he can't understand. At last, afraid for her life, and with nowhere to turn, Emily is marked by a vampire and brought to the shop Chicago House of Night, where she begins a magical new life that should allow the wounds from her past to heal. But as she gains strength and a powerful new name, she carries a dark need to wreak vengeance on the man whom she trusted most. From victim to high priestess, beautiful young women to power woman, beautiful young woman to powerful seductress, Nefrit's journey begins. Um, and the House of Night series started out really good, but they they seem to be marketed as young adult novels, and it became really adult really fast. I was a sophomore in high school and some of the stuff I was reading I was like H how is this getting past publishers into young adult material so um, like I said it just it changed for my cup of tea really fast this one I read in middle school I loved it I saw it on the website for like a dollar and I had to have it and basically it's about a demon who possesses a young man's body to go on vacation that's it and it is don't call me a demon I prefer the term fallen angel everybody deserves a vacation right especially if you have a pointless job like tormenting the dead so who who could blame me for blowing off my duties and taking a small, unauthorized break? Besides, I've always wanted to see what physical existence is like. That's why I borrowed the slightly used body of a slacker teen. Believe me, he wasn't going to be using it anymore anyway. I've never understood why humans do the things they do. Like sin. If it's so terrible, why do they keep doing it? I'm going to have a lot of fun finding out. And this book is originally $16.99. The first time I read it, I fell in love with it, and when I saw it again, I had to get it because I had to reread it. It was just that hilarious. Um, and it's not hilarious like funny ha-ha hijinks kind of thing. It's more... He's like a, a little kid, but he knows what these sins are. Sorry, I have two puppies, and they're at my legs. That's why my arm keeps going off. They want the attention. But, like I was saying, he's like a little kid. But he knows what these sins are. And he knows how to do them. But watching him, or not watching, but reading it. And seeing how he reacts to these. is it, It's great. Honestly, it is. So, I mean, if you get a chance to read it, I promise you it's worth it. Um, This one is called Hook. Hooked, sorry. Um, it's, I'm guessing, about knitting. Let's find out, shall we? 17-year-old Thea Gale House has always known how to take care of herself. With a flighty club owner mom and a standoffish recovering alcoholic dad, Thea has made her own way in her hometown of New York City. Tending the competitive Stuyvesant High School... But, but one chat with Will, a handsome senior, and she's a goner, completely hooked on him and unable to concentrate on anything else. Always worried that she will that she loves Will more than he loves her, Thea is pleasantly surprised when their romance weathers his move to college and he goes out of his way to keep her involved in his life. But then she discovers that she's pregnant, and that starts Thea and Will on a wild ride that neither of them is prepare, prepared for. Smart and touching, Hook brims with realistic, beautifully drawn characters and reminds us that love is never as easy or predictable as we might like it to be. Um, next time I do one of these, I'll be sure to keep the price list of what I actually paid. But originally, it's $8.99. And um, that one, I think, was like a dollar. Something like that. 
Um, I guess the title caught me on this one. I, I'm just going to let you guys read it. Yeah. Yeah, I kissed a zombie and I liked it. But reading the description makes it just a little bit more... 18-year-old eh. Algonquin Allie Rhodes doesn't need to watch Twilight to know what it's like to be around vampires. Her school is teeming with them, along with zombies and werewolves, of course. A few years ago, all the post-humans came out of the coffin, and now they're just as normal, just a normal part of life. But the movies don't tell the real story. Real vampires are brooding, self-absorbed jerks who run around acting all emo. That's why Aim Allie likes them anyway. Then one night, Allie goes to the cage to review a local band, the Sorry Marios, for her school's blog. Allie's known for her sarcastic wit, and she can't wait to rip apart the band's set. But when a special guest singer, Doug, hits the stage, his soft, crooning voice stops her heart. He seems like a real goth, not like the lame wannabes at her high school. And for the first time, pale skin and black clothing are hot to Allie. When she and Doug start dating, Allie's so swept off her feet that she doesn't suspect anything. Despite a few odd signs, he never changes clothes. His head is... His head is a funny shape, and he says practically nothing out loud. Finally, her best friends clue her in. Doug isn't just a really sincere goth. He's a zombie. Allie knows she has to break up with Doug, but soon learns that zombies are awfully hard to get rid of, and the school's vampire clique, a group of tightly knit... A group as tightly knit as the Mafia has its own plans for Allie's future. Will Allie survive her little experiment in dating the undead? So, I don't know. It, it, it seemed kind of funny. I've got a weird twisted sense of humor. Excuse me while I work on these puppies. Go lay down. Uh, go lay down, goobers. Okay. The next one in our lineup is called Royally Crushed. So, totally cannot see the cover of that. It is by Nikki Burnham. Apparently, there is there are others in the series called Royally Jack Spin Control and Do Over. I did not know this. Um, the story is when Valerie's parents split up and she has to move to a tiny European country called. I no way am I going to pronounce this. Schwerenborg? She's pretty sure her life is over. That is, until she meets Georg. He's smart, sweet, and unbelievably cute. And even better, he's a prince. But with Georg under so much pressure and the press watching their every move, Valerie soon discovers dating a prince is not exactly the happily ever after she's been hoping for. But Georg has swept her off her feet, and Valerie's not ready to give up her prince just yet so I don't know if oh no okay it's all three of these books it's royally jack spin control and uh, do over all in one okay that makes me a little happier I was gonna get mad thinking I just paid this money for this book and it's a trilogy so, it's originally $9.99, if you can kind of make that out. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like, unfortunately. Wish it did. It would make life so much easier. Um, this is the one I'm currently reading. The bookmark fell out. It's called Life in the Fat Lane. And this one kind of made me mad when I read the title. And when I read the description. And so far, I'm not liking the main character. I am only into the first chapter, chapter and a half. Um, but I don't, I'm going to read it, period, because I don't like starting a book and then not finishing it. But I'm not liking this character, how she, she kind of just lays down and lets it happen. She doesn't like it, but she's not willing to say, hey, look, that person's my friend. Stop. She pretty much just says, 
they're going to do it. They're the popular kids, but I can protect her as long as I'm her friend, which isn't how it works. And I understand this is a fictional book. I really do. But these are teenagers reading this, and sometimes teenagers have a hard way of differentiating between what goes on in these books and what's going on in real life. And so they look to these characters as role models. And I'm sorry, that's just not a role model I want my cousins or my nieces looking up to. Um, I will definitely let you guys know. If y'all are interested, let me know um, how it turns out. Well, not how it turns out. I won't tell you what happens. But I'll let you know if she ends up changing. But basically, what it is, is this young lady is a second generation pageant queen. She's being prized, uh, primped to be the next Miss Tennessee, Teen Tennessee, which is supposed to help her. Okay, I gotta take these off because the glare is getting on my nerves. I know it's gotta be getting on y'all's. Um, they're primping her to be the next Miss Teen Tennessee so that way she can be the next Miss Tennessee and go on to be Amer Miss America. Um... It starts out, she is getting ready for homecoming. She's got the, it's not the perfect boyfriend, actually. They, she, that's the one good thing I'm liking so far. And she's not dating the quarterback, anything like that. But all her friends are, and her parents are so obsessed with her getting homecoming queen. And this is the story of she gets a disease that starts, makes her to start gaining weight. And it's how her friends and family come to terms with that. Um, it's originally eight ninety nine. Um, I don't know so much if this is a young adults novel, as if it's meant for kind of the preteen set. But uh, give me a quick second. Stop it, YouTube goofballs um but um it's a random house book so i don't know but like i said i'm not too happy with how it's starting out okay this one i bought a while back and this is actually not the copy i got off of the website the copy i got off the website is actually a paperback and it was a scratch and dent copy i wanted to read this book from the moment it was first published but I could not, for the life of me, talk my dad into paying 20 bucks for this book. Um, so, this one should actually be with my other stack of books from Dollar Tree because this is where I found this. It was originally marked $3.99. And the way my Dollar Tree is set up is when they have really big titles like the Carrie Diaries or... The um, the it is it it girl, and uh, gossip girl, and stuff like that. When they have titles like that, they'll have this um, bin up at the front, and they'll fill it with all these books. So people are like, oh hey, well, I saw the book jacket, and I knew this book jacket, and I had to have it. And there is a second one, and I thought the one I had bought was the second one, because I'd been waiting to read it because I wanted to get the first one and I thought the one I had was the second so I grabbed this one I was like yeah okay I can read it and then I can read the second one got home started putting stuff away and I realized lo and behold I already had this one except in a paperback and it's the um, TV cover for the TV show um, I guess I did a republishing for the TV show and so it's got that actress on it. And she is a great actress. If you've not seen the show, it's actually pretty cute. Um, so this is based off the Sex in the City. It's called The Carrie Diaries. <laughs> Puppies. They have toys. Tons of them. They want to chew on each other. Okay, so this is The Carrie Diaries is the coming-of-age story of one of the most iconic characters of our generation. Before Sex and the City, Carrie Bradshaw was a small-town girl who knew she wanted more. 
She's ready for real life to start, but first she must navigate her senior year of high school. Up until now, Carrie and her friends have been inseparable. Then Sebastian Kidd comes into the picture, and a friend's betrayal makes her question everything. When an unforgettable cast of char- with an unforgettable cast of characters, the Carrie Diaries is the is the story of how a regular girl learns to think for herself and evolves into a sharp, insightful writer. Readers will learn about her family background and how she found her writing voice and the indelible impression her early friendships and relationships left on her. Through adventures both audacious and poignant, we'll see what brings Carrie to her beloved New York City where her new life begins. Um, I've seen every episode of Sex and the City. Um, when I started watching the show of this, which I gotta read it and see, make sure it doesn't follow the same storyline. Give me a second. I gotta go check on that. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Anyways, so basically, from what I've seen of the show, the Carrie Bradshaw and the actual Sex in the City. They do kind of touch on some of her backstory in the show. If you watch and kind of pay attention, it's there. This doesn't really follow it. I haven't read the story, but from what I've seen of the series, while on its own, a standalone is great. But the fact that they took such an iconic character as Carrie Bradshaw and they made it about her, it kind of doesn't work for me. Um, if you've read it before and you've seen both series, go for it. Let me know what you think. But, just, I don't know. But, like I said, as a standalone on its own, I'm hoping I can separate the Sex and the City movies and TV show, HBO show, and this and the CW Carrie Bradshaw. Okay. Two more books from book outlet. It's This is Milkweed by Jerry Spinelli. Um, fell in love with this author my fourth grade year of school. Um, he wrote another book called Loser. And if you have small children um, as they're starting school, I promise you get that book to them. Read it to them. It's It would be great. Sit down with them at night. Read it to them. I promise you. There's there's lessons in that book that even at 24, I can still take away from it. I found it, the loser at Goodwill. I, I snatched it up. I had to have it. The character is great. And um, that's not the book I'm doing now, so I'll... But I promise you, the book is about as thick as this one. It's got thicker print, so while it is... Um, by the same author, it is meant more for um, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Sixth grade would be pushing it. I would read your, that book to your child as they're starting actually kindergarten to fifth grade. I wouldn't sit down with your child at sixth grade or anything like that and say, here you go, let's do this. Um, that's really, those lessons are something they need implemented early on and as an adult read it and you'll understand what I mean um however I know for a fact he is an awesome writer I've also started this one um this is about a little boy um uh, I don't know how to explain this one so I'll just read you the cover story because I haven't really gotten far I'm only so far in it's eight ninety nine, just so you know um, but that's not what I paid for it because this, this website is awesome. And it's it, this was brand new. I paid $2 for this, not even. So, anyways. He's a boy called Jew. Gypsy, stop thief. Filthy son of Abram. He's a boy who lives in the streets of Warsaw. He's a boy who steals food for himself and the other orphans. He's a boy who believes in bread and mothers and angels. He's a boy who wants to be a Nazi with tall, shiny jack boots of his own until the day that suddenly makes him change his mind. And when the trains come to empty the Jews from the ghetto of his 
of the damned, he's a boy who realized it's safest of all to be nobody. Ten years after it was first published, Milkweed continues to be a story everyone should read. Um, so yeah, like I said, I was... Ten, the first time I ever was introduced to Jerry Spinelli, and I'm 24, 14 years, and I'm still loving his writing. <laughs> Give me a second. Barking dog. Okay, I'm going to stop beating this dead horse while it's down. Jerry Spinelli, if you found his books, read them. I promise you, it's worth it. Okay. Let me do... I don't know how to do this. Okay, let me do this one first, because the next one... I want to know how many people have actually seen the movie. Um, okay, this one has a movie as well. This did not come from Book Outlet. I got this from Barnes & Noble. And it was a book I found back around tax time. I didn't have the money then, but as soon as I got the money, I went and snatched this book up. And it bummed me out. <laughs> it bummed me out really bad. That I paid. That I, I may not have paid twenty six for it, which is what they're asking. I think I may have paid twenty three, but still, I paid that much money. And the artwork is beautiful. Well, you can. So I mean, the artwork on its own. If I had just bought the art book, that would have been one thing. I bought this thinking it was going to have an actual story. It doesn't really. It's like a rough outline. It's like they took the movie, which there is a movie based off of this. It's called Wolf Children. And the they forgot to fill in the details. Basically, it's just a rough outline, it seems like. It's like they took the storyboards to me and just tossed them in a book and said, Here spend your money on this but you're still going to have to go back and watch the movie to even understand a lot of stuff about it which I mean you get the basic gist of it but you don't really come to know the characters which is what a book is for me usually I can watch the movie and I don't really learn who the characters are whereas I read the book and give me a second. Anyways, I read the book and I can feel the characters' emotions. I go through the stuff with them. Not so much with this one. This one was a letdown. Love the artwork. I've heard the reviews on the movie. They're, it's great. It's a sad movie. Blah, blah, blah. I paid 20 something dollars for a book and the book let me down so I'm hoping this movie's worth it because if I buy the movie and it's anything like the book I'm going to be one mad customer okay now I need my 90's kids to go back with me back in the 90's Lifetime released a movie don't know what it was called I, or I don't remember, but basically it is a teenage girl. I, she was a senior. They did change that. She was a senior in the movie because she was getting ready for prom with her boyfriend and her friends. She's at lunch one day. She sees her face on a milk carton. She goes home. She asks her older parents they are she calls them mom and dad you know why are there no baby pictures of me where's this where's that and the parents fess up and they say well your mother is really our daughter and she showed up one day with you she left she went back to the cult she was part of and she left you with us. We never asked any questions, nothing like that. That was it. Beginning end of the story. She's like, no, that's not it. 
she shows them the pictures, they call the number, and she goes to live with her biological family because she was kidnapped. And the whole movie is how she finds out she was kidnapped, finds out she was kidnapped, and it comes to terms with that and the life that is going to happen now. And the resolution of the movie is basically her biological family has to understand that she was three years old when she was taken. And she's not the little girl they lost anymore. And she has this whole other life that does not include them. And now they have that ability to build that relationship, but they have to make, they have to come to terms with the fact they can't just take her from these people who she's known her entire life as her parents. Because that's doing exactly, that's doing to her exactly what was done to them years ago. That being said, the movie was a good movie. I didn't realize when I bought this book, <laughs> this is the book the movie is based off. This book was published for the first time in 1990. It is a series of books. There are four. Main character's name is Janie or Jenny. Um, that is this. The first book is her coming to terms with the fact that she is kidnapped, and her confronting her parents or grandparents. That's the basic first book. This has no nothing to do with her meeting her. her um, biological parents, anything like that. I basically read <laughs> the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie. It took me three days. I was not a happy camper. That being said, it is an okay book. You have to take into account. Not probably one of those books that's going to transcend times and but for what it's worth if you take it at face value it's pretty good it reads like a very young adult almost preteen novel however do not give this <laughs> to your 10 year old you can maybe get away with this going for a 13 year old would probably be the youngest I would go because there are references to sexual connotation or sexual context um, that's pretty much as bad as it gets I think I don't, it's been a week or so since I've read it Um, yeah, I think it's about as bad as it gets, but again, I wouldn't give it to a 10-year-old. I'd pretty much just say, yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, this, that, that whole lead-up was just to say, Lifetime, I don't remember, it's been years since I've seen the movie, but please, if someone knows the movie I'm talking about, let me know. And also, um read the book. It, it's kind of worth it. If you want to spend a week reading what you can spend two hours watching. It's a long drawn out process that she could have fit all of it in this one book. This one book follows the span of a week to two weeks. I think the whole movie spans I think a month maybe so I mean that's kind of and I promise you except for a few scenes in this this is going to be one of the times when the movie is probably better than the book because it reads like a preteens novel but it was published for young adults okay 
that is all for my book outlet and my one lovely expensive Barnes and Noble book. If you can listen quietly, you can maybe hear the puppies nursing in the background. They don't need a nurse. They're old enough to stop. They won't. I don't know what to do. If someone knows, let me know. Because they don't listen to me. And pulling them away ain't helping. So, anyways, that is that. Y'all have a great night. Thank you.